day good day everybody and once again we are back together so we are going to be looking at question six which has to do with the doppler effect and guys i must admit this is one of the most most difficult questions on the doppler effect that i've seen uh, but let's try and navigate the question together um, the memo for this has not been provided as yet so of course we are going to have to navigate this on our own Right, let's go into the question. And if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you are part of this family. All right, let's get into the question. So they say to us, a bat emits sound waves with the frequency Fs as it flies at a constant speed Vb towards a vertical cliff. The waves reflect off a cliff with the same speed that they strike the cliff, okay? And with a wavelength of uh, omega L, that's 0 0.016 as shown in the simplified diagram below. Take the speed of sound in air to be 340. Right, so firstly, so we're given the speed of sound in air, right? Um, so they say to us, name and state the phenomenon that results in the change in, in frequency of the detected sound waves. Please, guys, I'm going to expect you to know this from the top of your head. We're talking about the Doppler effect, and please, uh, you can look up the definition thereof. I want to get into the meaty part of this question. Right, they say show that the frequency of the sound waves emitted by the bat, okay, is this guy over here. So we are looking for the frequency of the source. And what is the source? The bat is the source in this case. So we are going to treat the cliff as our listener. Okay. So which means we want to know what would be, uh, you know, the cliff uh, be, be uh, hearing in a sense, right? What will be the frequency as perceived by the cliff? Okay. Right. Now, firstly, we are going to use the Doppler effect equation. So we know that FL, that's V plus minus VS, I mean VL, okay, over V plus minus VS multiplied by FS. Right, now please I want you to note, guys, the cliff, okay, so we're going to say velocity of the listener. The cliff is stationary. So that means already in our equation, right, we know that this is going to be, 340, right? Uh, that's plus or minus zero. Okay, so I'm going to say minus zero divided by, this is going to be 340. Now remember that the bet is moving towards the cliff. So meaning that the frequency that is perceived by the cliff should be actually higher uh, than the frequency that is emitted by the bet, right? Why? Because the bet is actually moving towards the cliff all right so this which means that uh, the frequency of the listener will um uh, in in this case uh, the free the waves will be compressed okay right so now we are simply saying um that's going to be minus vs but in this case our source is actually the bet okay and that is multiplied by the frequency of the source so we're looking at the frequency of the listener Right, and they told us in this case what the wavelength of the listener is, right? We're going to get to that in just a little while. Multiplied by the frequency of the source. So, when I look at this, now remember, when we look at the frequency, the frequency of any object is always the speed of sound in the medium divided by the wavelength of that a particular wave right so what is the speed of the medium in this i mean the speed of sound in this medium they told us this is 340 and please ladies and gents don't make the mistake of using the speed of the uh you know of the source or the listener in this case we just simply use the speed of sound so this is 340 divided by 0 0.016 and that will give us so if we go to our calculator that's 340 divided by 0 0.016. And so that should give us 21,250 hertz. Right. So we know that the frequency of the listener will be 21,250, right, over 1. This is going to be, right, remember that's going to be 340 minus 0 fs. So that will be 340 fs divided by 
340 minus VB. All right, now let's try and express the frequency of the source in this case. Right, if we cross multiply, we end up with 340 FS, right? So 340 FS multiplied by 1. And then we've got equal to, this is 21,250 multiplied into 340 minus VB. And now, ladies and gents, let's try and simplify this as much as we possibly can. So if we divide by 340 on both sides, what I do on the left, I do on the right. So that will be divided by 340. And so I find that FS is equal to. Now, please, I want you to note, we've got 21,250, right, uh, divided by 340. Firstly, let's multiply that uh, into 340, right? The 340s will cancel out, okay? And we'll be left with 21,250, right? Minus, again, multiplying this entire thing into VB, right? 21,250 divided by 340 should give us, uh, uh, in this case, let's, okay. The, um, so our answer divided by, 340 right to get 62.5 so this is going to be minus 62.5 multiplied by vb and so that is the expression for the frequency of the source okay right exactly what they have asked us to find out over there right now let's go to the next question this is where ladies and gents i said shoo um, I really found uh, this to be a little bit uh, on the challenging end, but let's try it together, right? So they said the frequency of the reflected sound waves detected by the bat is 850, right? Higher than the frequency of the sound emitted, uh, sound waves emitted by the bat, okay? Now we already found an expression for the frequency that is emitted by the bat. Okay, it's the one that we found there. So what happens in this case? When um, the frequency of sound now bounces off, okay, they say to us it actually now becomes 180 hertz greater, okay? So which means this is what, um, you know, the bat would be able to, to perceive, all right? So meaning that now we kind of treat the cliff as our source, okay? And we are going to treat our bet as the listener. So I want you to note there, in this case, we are reflecting the sound waves. They are going back in this case, and the bet would kind of become the one that is actually listening. Right, now, uh, they did say to us that it's 850 more than... Uh, what the uh, the frequency of the source is, right? So what do we do in that case? We're going to say, right, when we apply the Doppler effect, the frequency of the listener, that's V plus minus the velocity of the listener divided by V plus minus the velocity of the source multiplied by the frequency of the source. Now we are treating the bet as our listener. Right, so we're saying, what is the bet going to actually hear? They said to us 850 more than what was emitted, so which means the frequency of the listener will be 850 plus what was emitted. And what was emitted, it was 21,250, right, minus 62.5 VB, right? So that's going to be. Uh, more than what was um, was emitted so now ladies and gents our uh, source in this case which is the cliff that is stationary but the listener being the bet is actually moving right so now what we are going to do is say well that's going to be v now because we want the frequency to be higher it means that this is going to be a uh, an improper fraction right so that's going to be V, that's 340, okay, plus the velocity of the listener, but the bet is the listener this time around. 
So that's going to be plus VB, the velocity of the bed, okay? Divided by, in this case, we've got 340, okay? And that is going to be multiplied by the frequency of the source, okay? But remember, the frequency of our source in this case, all right, uh, as emitted by the, by the cliff, uh, we know that the frequency they did say to us uh, was actually equal, right? So we're going to say this is plus 21,250, right? The frequency of the source minus 62.5 multiplied by VB. And ladies and gents, we're looking for VB. In this case, we've managed to get a um, some kind of an expression that has only VB in it, okay? All that's left for us to do is to try and simplify this as much as we possibly can, right? So what I'm going to do is add everything that I have here. So 850 plus um, uh, 21 to 50, that's going to give us, I think that's going to be uh, 22. Um, yeah, let's, let's add that. My mind is a little bit lazy. 850 plus 21 to 50, that gives me 22,100 minus 62.5 VB. Right, now if I, I'm going to cross multiply in this case, this would be multiplied by 340, this denominator over here, right? This would be equal to 340 plus VB into 21,250 minus 62.5 VB. All right, and you can tell in this case, we're going to do quite a bit of uh, gymnastics mathematically. All right, let's try to do that. Okay, so I'm going to say, well, 340 multiplied by 22,100. So that's 340 times 22,100 minus 340 uh, times 62.5. Okay, VB. All right, now on the other end, ladies and gents, let's use our fall method. So we've got 340 times... 21,250, okay? And we've got 340 multiplied by 62.5, okay? We had already found out that this would give us minus 21,250, okay? In fact, maybe let me just leave it as 340, uh, times 62.5, 62.5 VB, okay? Right, and then we go to the next one. Uh, please, if you don't mind, for the sake of space, I'm going to have 21,250, right? And in this case, VB, that is, okay? And the last one is going to be minus 62.5 vb squared now ladies and gents what we are going to have to do here is just a, a bit of uh, maneuvering mathematically but i can already see that we are going to cancel out minus 340 times uh, 62.5 vb and that one over there so that already means that we're going to cancel uh, something out right now i want us to note in this case uh, let's go on to the next one so we've got, uh, there's VB squared, right? So I'm going to say when we take it to the other side, it becomes positive 62.5 VB squared, okay? So we are done with this. When we take it to the other side, it became positive. And then I've got uh, minus 21,250 VB. And now... I've got my constant terms over there. So this is 340 
times 22,100 minus 340. Okay, uh, let me just do this quickly. So that's 340 times 22,100 minus 340 times 21,250. Right, I get 289,000, ladies and gents. So that is going to be plus 20, 289 rather, 289,000. Right, ladies and gents, what we can do is try to simplify this as much as we possibly can. Um, if we try to divide by 62.5, I get a VB squared, okay, for the first term, minus 21,250 divided by 62.5. Uh, okay, I get 340 minus 340 VB. All right, and finally, going to say 289,000, okay, divided by 340, uh, I mean, uh, rather 62.5, and I get 4,624. Right, and this is equal to zero. Right, so we're going to use, uh, in this case, uh, uh, let's find out what, what delta is. That's B squared minus 4AC, right? So in this case, that means that we've got a minus 3 uh, B squared, which is minus 340 squared minus 4 times our A value is 1 and our C value is 4,624, right? And what would that give us? Okay, we've got 340 squared minus 4 times four six two four okay and we get um i get a value of ninety seven thousand one oh four so now to get the value of vb we're going to say minus b plus minus the square root of delta right so that's square root of this value that we just got so i might as well just substitute minus b so that's minus a negative 340 so that will be 340 plus the square root of delta which we just found that's 97104 and this is divided by in this case 2 times a and our a value is 1 so that will just be divided by 2 all right so let's take the okay so that's 340 plus the square root of 97104 divided by 2. Okay, I get a value of 325. Huh, I don't know if uh, that is realistic. Okay, I get 325.81 meters per second. Okay, so if we use the minus there, um, 340 minus that value, yeah, that looks a little bit more realistic. So VB would be equal to 14.19 meters per second. All right, I think uh, this one is not applicable. Okay, but in this case, uh, because I mean a bat cannot fly that fast, uh, but I would definitely accept 14.14 uh, .14 meters per second, all right, as our answer. And please, ladies and gents, please try to do it and let me know if you get a similar answer or if you've got an approach that might be different to the one that I took. Um, this is my thinking around this question. And honestly speaking, it was five marks. Uh, shoo, what a question it was. These guys were really, really fighting. Well, I'm going to keep question six here. I hope to see you guys again another time. Please don't forget to subscribe and to like. And uh, we will see each other when we look at question seven, which is on electrostatics. For now, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.